Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Coleman. I grew up in Gunnison and I went to Gunnison High School. I am so grateful that I was honored to play for Virginia Harris my freshman year in college here at Western in 1975. I have an interesting perspective, I think, because as a, a teenager working into Title IX expectations, I also was a daughter of the head men's basketball coach here at Western. But let me tell you about my high school experience. 1972, President Nixon signed Title IX into law. 1973, I was a junior, pretty full of myself. We had two sports in the high school, track and gymnastics. I always felt I was kind of an Amazon, a little tall for the uneven parallel bars as I'd swing around them and my feet would drag on the mat. And then for track, we would uh, run out on the fairgrounds on the horse track and watching my classmates twist their ankles on the dirt clods, I, I just didn't like to run. <laughs> so October of 1973, as a junior, Title IX's here. Not knowing how long it takes for change, I decided I'd try out for the boys' basketball team at the high school. And as you may recall then, every night, Monday through Thursday, tryouts were held after school in the gym, and they were just a series of skills tests. And the following morning, the coaches would post the results of those skills tests on the boys' locker room door. Monday night, I walked into the gym and my classmates, all boys, were a little surprised, but I didn't receive any guff. Tuesday morning, my name was on that list. I followed through the whole week. Thursday night, I thought, boy, I've shot so many uh, free throws and made them. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I did so many layups in 30 seconds. I think I've got a shot at this. And sure enough, Friday morning, one, two, three, four, five, Jody Coleman. I'm six out of 18. So Friday in English class, there's a knock on the door and the office aide comes in and interrupts the class, says to the teacher that Jody Coleman needs to go to the counselor's office. So I got up and kind of like Gidget goes to the counselor's office. I had no idea. I sat down in the counselor's office and he had his back to me. I was a little nervous. I just started babbling. Well, my English research paper's going really well, sir. Uh, it's on Elizabethan musical instruments and I think the teacher's really gonna like it. It's due in three weeks. He turned around and he got six inches within my face with that finger. And he said, you are an embarrassment. You stop this monkey business trying out for the boys team. Your father would be ashamed of you. In fact, I'm gonna call him right now. Well, I stood up and said, is there anything else, sir? There were definite gender roles then. And uh, I am so grateful to be in the company of women like, like you're going to hear about who endured the disparity and, and the grace. I mean, many men were very gentlemanly-like and very kind, but it was very difficult for them to have to change their programs. And I speak as the daughter of the men's basketball coach because at the dinner table, I would hear over my dead body, Virginia Harris is going to drill holes in that basketball court to make those volleyball standards. And, and I, I would say, Dad, it was difficult. And I can remember playing for Virginia Harris, such a lady, that colleges, inter, she started intercollegiate athletics here. And uh, I imagine she had a little 
trial to get other colleges to come play here because we were relegated to the lower gym where the wall was three feet from the basketball court lines. Finally, she was allowed to let us play up here in the men's gym. But every Friday, we had to get the tape measure and put down masking tape to lay out the volleyball court boundaries. We brought up the standards, which was a steel pole in concrete in a tire for holding the volleyball net. Once we got the net attached, we'd tie a rope onto the standard over to the bleachers and Miss Harris would be there in the middle on a chair holding the tape measure. Jody, another inch, seven feet, four inches, another inch. <laughs> Until we got the net taut enough. And then after the match, we'd have to pull up the tape and make sure there's no sticky stuff on the floor. I get that, I understand that. I understand that in order to have funds for women's sports, they had to find the money. And I am under the understanding it probably came from men's programs. And I just had no role models except Miss Harris. And she was so strong under, under fire. And, and yet they, the, the men, I think, very much respected Miss Harris as a, as a teacher and as a coach for what she has done to get us off the, get us off the horse track. <laughs> um, something you should know too, for each of the men's programs, it's just the way it was. There'd be a head coach and an assistant coach, or for some sports, several assistant coaches. Miss Harris was the coach for several sports at the same time with no assistants, no assistant coaches. She taught full time and she ran the intramural program after the academic class, classes were over. It, it was a different time for women to allow kids like me the honor of playing sports. And when I earned a scholarship from her, earned, the women had to earn a scholarship. I felt like I was a professional athlete and this was my job and my duty and I'm gonna honor this. I, I have this opportunity that very few people have. So I'm grateful. I'm, I'm very proud of all the little girls that can run around today and have these selections of options of different sports. I can see where Title IX has brought women's sports and men's sports, and I'm so grateful for being able to stand on the shoulders of other people who paved the way for me.